Uh, did you guys lose uh, uh, power last night or anything? No, we, we 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 didn't lose power last night. So that's good. Yeah, for, my son was ready because we had lost power the other day when St. John's Parade and a bunch of other areas yep. lost power. Uh, and my son is not a fan of when the power goes out. Kind of freaks him out a little bit. And so we made sure we had a flashlight. And last night with the wind. He had just uh, this feeling, so he made sure to grab that flashlight as I was taking him to bed to bring it into his room. So he was ready, but it didn't happen. Well, we had some listeners that did lose their power. One of them actually took the time to call in during our birthday phone-in. You remember when you used to do that? Oh, yeah. And she thanked uh, Linville Electric Department. You know, my brother-in-law was a lineman for 20 years or so. And, uh, yeah, the amount, of, the amount of dedication and work that those that whole, that whole line, you know, anyone who does that work, Deserves all the accolades in the world to be up on those buckets at, uh, you know, 50 mile an hour winds and restoring power for people that they don't know. It's yeah. pretty awesome. Torrential downpours and such. All yeah. right. So there's our props uh, to the community that keeps the community safe. Uh, last week, we were talking about some special things uh, as far as coming up on the holiday season uh, that your insurance needs to reflect. Yeah. And as we got ready to wrap things up here, we very, very briefly, very lightly touched on um what if Uncle Rob gave so and so a vintage Mustang, and how that would impact their insurance? Mm-hmm. Now we know that there's a way to do that through the entire year. Mm-hmm. Okay, not just the time that they drive it. Why don't we start off with that? Yeah. So there's different types of policies out there. Uh, companies such as Haggerty. Another one is J.C. Taylor. There may be a handful more. Plus companies like Progressive or Safeco, or even companies more regional like Cooperative Insurance. Many of them have a way to address antique and antique or classic cars and how is it defined it's defined based on age you know a classic car i think has to be over 10 years old or so with some companies 25 plus for an antique so um maybe i'm remembering that wrong but you get the gist of it um so there's different ways to ensure that now you know your daily driver whether it be a 2005 honda accord or a 2021 gmc whatever sierra denali yeah denali hey Go all the way. Um, You know, daily drivers are going to be rated differently because they're daily drivers. You know, so you're either driving it for pleasure use on a regular basis or you're driving it to and from work every day or on a regular basis anyway. But these classic or antique cars, these are nice cars that you're driving on nice days. So they're going to be driven in parades. They're going to be Sunday cruisers. They're going to be the occasional use. So as such, these companies have great markets for these types of vehicles to be able to give you coverage is really unparalleled in terms of the, of how much coverage you're going to get in a car. I mean, you think about it, some of these 1960s vintage antique vehicles are insured for 70, 80, 90, a hundred thousand dollars in some cases, and very inexpensive when you think of the grand scheme of things compared to what you're paying for your 40 or $50,000 daily driver. And it's because of the use of the vehicle and the suspected you know, way that you're driving it, which is with care. <laughs> right. Now, the reason we carried this over from last week to this week was because one of the questions in my mind, I think is going to need some, some decent explanation. Yeah. Now, we've used the example of classic cars. A dear friend of mine also has a collection of classic snowmobiles. Mm-hmm. I know folks out there that have some amazing vintage tractors that they take out yeah. and show. Um, when it comes to a classic vehicle or something that is not a fair market vehicle, meaning, in other words, like my 2004 Saturn, right? do they need to have an appraisal done? This is why I wanted to save it till this week. Great, great, great question. So, you know, uh, an appraisal is very important uh, in all of these cases because otherwise, you know, the, you think of the way that vehicles are typically settled for, for loss and they're settled on an actual cash value basis. So taking into consideration the mileage, the condition, the year, you know, so a 1967 Mustang might ACV actual cash value, maybe $3,000. I mean, it's not going to be, come on, let's be serious. But I mean, that's what you want to take into consideration is there is a market for those types of vehicles. Henceforth, there is a market that has a way to appraise them and give you justification and price and cost. And these companies like Haggerty and JC Taylor, that's what they do. So they understand that you may be insuring a car that's you know, in the fit from the fifties for $90,000. That's very, but in order to do that, you have to have the justification to insure for that limit. Okay. So the, one of the reasons I I thought of this was I was watching, you mentioned Haggerty. It's really funny because they've got a, they've got a YouTube channel. Uh Yes, they do. Nice one. And uh, uh, there's also uh, a couple of fellows out there, uh, sound like they're from Wisconsin or something like that. But anyways, they've recently restored a 1957 Gullwing Mercedes wow. Benz. Okay. Wow. Now the car is appraised at over a million dollars. Uh-huh. Okay. 
did they put a million dollars into it? Yeah, probably. But they're never going to get that back. Right. You know, even when they sell it. So if Joe has his 68 Impala convertible and he's got $25,000 into the restoration, what's the likeliness that they're going to get $25,000 worth of coverage? Pretty high if they're with the right company. Okay. Yeah, pretty high. Uh, <clears throat> company like J.C. Taylor, I'm sorry I'm froggy this morning, but the company like J.C. Taylor, they actually will insure you as you're doing the restoration too. Um, which is really cool. So it's about keeping a dialogue and having having uh, you know things in place and good documentation as to what you're doing. It's a simple process. Um, yeah, Haggerty is one of my favorite companies because they insure even uh, vintage fire trucks. You know, so if you know somebody who likes to buy old fire trucks and is not in service, not going to to, to fires, um, they have a market for that. You know, race cars, there's a market for. I mean, you know, anything that's not a daily driver, you could probably find something. You talked about vintage snowmobiles. Well, there's vintage snowmobiles that I'm sure there's a market for it somewhere if you look in all the right places. Um, I honestly don't have any that come to top of mind first thing this morning, but I'm sure there's opportunity there. You know, and then tractors. Tractors actually are, are kind of the opposite. I mean, even the farm tractors that people use every day, those things hold value. Um, you know, I mean, so there's definitely plenty of opportunity in markets for insuring tractors as well. Well, as we just talked about tractors here real quick, the other day I was heading through town and I saw, and I'm not kidding you, man, this thing was the size of a house. All right. It had like two two tires wide on, on the backside two, and these big monsters up front driving right down downtown Lindenville. <laughs> well, you have to get there from here or here from there. That's so. right. And uh, it was actually parked at the diner, so we went in and had lunch in the tractor. But anyways, <laughs> uh, we mentioned snowmobiles. Uh, current snowmobiles, obviously, you want to have insurance coverage on that as we get close to wrapping things up here. Yeah, yeah, snowmobiles. Gosh, you know, snowmobiles are the the, the, the policies that come and go the most, okay? Because it, you you insure your snowmobile when there's snow and you don't when there's not, especially you know if you don't have a loan on it. Um, there's ways to do this that's more cost effective. So if you have multiple toys, I've said this before and I'll say it again, it's worth repeating. If you have ATVs, UTVs, snowmobiles, have them all in the same policy. That way you can add and, and remove very easily without having to start and cancel coverage all the time. So much better, so much better. And more companies are making that an offering where you can put snowmobiles on policies with other units. Uh, such a worthwhile thing to do. Check it out, look into it. Well, I remember that from one of our previous chats. Yeah. And with that, uh, we record these, send them off to you. You post them up, but someone may have questions. Give us a call, 748-5224. You can find us on Portland Street in St. Johnsbury. We have our Christmas tree up. We are collecting toys for the Santa Fund in St. Johnsbury. So love to have you stop on in. We are open, and you can drop off a toy if you like to. Uh, you can also find us on our website, thebarrettagency.com, Google, YouTube, and Facebook. Just look for Barrett Insurance Agency. Mike, be safe. We'll chat with you again next week. Sounds okay? like a plan. All right, folks, we head up to the top of the hour, 9 o'clock. We'll have news from NBC and WGMT at 10 of. We're going to give away more, more movie passes to go to the Star Theater this weekend on us and see the new Ghostbusters.